sum of thank God for every man and every woman of God here. I thank God for my sister. She is one of the before the beginning. As I was being released from prison, living in my house, and from there. Started in my life, being in the church, it was there when I was released and the man of God blessed me. And thank God for my wife, who has been so supportive, who has been there. And I thank God that he is still fighting the good fight of faith with me. Before I go on with this word of God, there is a man here that I met yesterday. And I'm going to talk now about him to you after the service and then open your heart and see what wisdom that we can do. But the Lord allowed me to see <coughs> him yesterday and we talk and there's some pain that really really need to be taken care of. Maybe you can have wisdom or you know people that they can give you the wisdom to find the issue. Amen. But let's go to the word of God first. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you find your Bible with me to the book of Romans? Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We are going to start from verse 8. We have been talking about the overcoming faith. Faith that overcoming. Last week we talked about the faith that gives all the victory through Jesus Christ. And today we want to talk about the power of God's word. The power of God's word. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 138 verse 2 it says God magnified his word above his name. He magnified his word above his name. And we all know that God created all things by the work of his power. And we also know that Jesus came by this incorruptible seed of the word of God that was spoken by an angel to Mary. And as Mary was questioning, how shall this be? The Bible says, the angel said, the power of the most high shall overcome you. And the only thing that shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. You will be overshadowed by the glory of God. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God works together. We see in the beginning of creation that God could not create nothing without His Word. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that God created the world by his word. He said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The heart was without form and void, and darkness was in the all over the heart. And the spirit of the Lord was moving over the face of the heart. But the spirit was just moving, the world had not come and the Spirit could not create nothing until there came the world, let there be light, and there was light. In the beginning of creation in Genesis chapter 1, and in, in John chapter 1, the Bible says that in John chapter 1, starting the New Testament, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it says in the beginning it was the world. In the beginning was the world. The world was with God. And the world was God. In verse 14, it said, That world became flesh and dwelt among us. 
the powerful word of God, the logo became rumor, the written became spoken, and it became alive, and it became flesh. Jesus said in the book of John 6, verse 63, it is the spirit that brings life. The flesh profit nothing. He said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Sensation 
kingdom of grace. We have the full Bible in our life. We can read the Bible now. But if you look at the book of Hebrew, chapter 1, I want, to, I want to point out something to you. And then hold on to that Romans chapter 10. We are coming back to our text. In that book of Hebrew, if you look at the verse 1, chapter 1, the Bible says, God. God at sundry times and in diverse manners. God at sundry times, it means, it's saying, God at different times and in different manners, spread in contrast to who? To the Father by what? By the prophets. I want you to catch this and get this. He said, God at sundry times or in the holy days and in different manners spent in time by under the Father by the prophet. God was speaking to our forefathers through the prophet. Not too many of the Old Testament people have the word of God. They don't have the Bible. They have to go to the synagogue. They have to go once a year to Jerusalem to hear what does the Lord. They have to go and hear what the prophet is saying. So we need to thank God for the dispensation of grace. Where we have the living word of God in our life that we can digest and study and meditate upon and become brand new inside. Bible is saying here, God and in the old time, in different manner, spake to the fathers by the what? Prophet. But I want you to notice verse 2. He said, in these last days, God is not speaking. Yeah, I thank God for prophet today. I thank God for the evangelist, the apostle, the pastors, and the teacher. But he said to verse 2, he said, in these last days, spoken unto us by who? By his son, whom he had appointed the heir of all things, by whom also he walked, he made the world. By his son, who is his son? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the word of God. Because in the book of John, chapter 1, in the beginning was the world. The world was with God. And the world was God. The world is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was Jesus. Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. That is what he's saying right there. So, in these last days, God is speaking to us by his word. And I want you to look this verse 3. He said, Who made the brightness of his glory and the headstrong image of his person? Now, to catch this phrase. He said, And upholding all things by the word of his power. God is upholding. He's holding the whole world by the word of his power. He's upholding. He's transforming your life. He's doing great matter things by the word of his power. So God is bringing you back into the beginning that your life cannot be transformed or going great mighty things cannot happen in your life if you are not if you are ignoring the world. God said if I couldn't Create the world without my word. What makes you think you can do anything without my word? He said the spirit was moving in the head in the beginning before God created all things, but the spirit could not do nothing. The spirit was just moving. The spirit was moving, waiting for God to speak. And as soon as the Bible says, as soon as God said, let there be light. The Spirit brought forth light. The Spirit is the power of God that takes the word of God and brings it into manifestation. Notice when Mary was about to deliver Jesus, uh, the Bible said the angel visited Mary and told Mary, you are highly favored, you are blessed, you are going to bring forth a child and his name is the call of Jesus. And Mary asked the question, he said, she wasn't asking a question of doubt. She was saying, how can this be? Because I never knew any man. I never been with any man. The Holy Spirit said, and the angel said, the power of the most high shall overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And that only thing that shall be 
part of you shall be called the Son of God. And you know what Mary said? Let it be to me according to your word. You spoke it and take it and deliver it because the word is power. I don't understand I am going to deliver a baby when I'm in Virgin. But because you said, have you made it? And the manifestation came. And the Bible says, let's ask all things are possible to those who believe. All it takes is to believe what God said. I don't care what your doctor said if you see and you go to the hospital. The doctor's word is not the last word. I don't care if the doctor say, hey, this is a fact. I'll show you every proof. Listen, the fact can change, but truth will live for heaven. The Bible says, is that the children of Israel were delivered. They were delivered from Egypt. They were going to the promised land. And the Bible says that uh, there was a red sea in the front of them that they couldn't cross over. It was impossible and it was a fact that it is impossible to cross over a red sea. But the truth came the fact. It was a fact that in the wilderness there was no water, but the truth came the fact. The truth brought water from the rock. It was a fact that there was no food in the wilderness, but the truth came the fact. The truth brought manna from heaven. Listen, the Bible said those people, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and none of their clothes worn out. All things are possible to those who believe. But in this passage of Romans chapter 10, I was bringing my text earlier. I wanted to show you something very powerful there in Romans chapter 10. He said, that word is near you now. You don't need to seek after any pastor. Yes, it's good to go to your pastor. It's good to go to your prophet. If that you know that he's a prophet, it's good to go to the man and woman of God that you respect <laughs> to give you a word of encouragement. But when it comes into the direction for your life, it is going to be by faith in the word of God. Amen. The prophet is going to find his own direction too. But God predestined you, prophet don't predestine you. The pastor. Do not give you a predestination. God give you a predestiny. The pastor can only teach you to get mature in the way where you are sensitive to the world that you can move to his direction. The prophet can only encourage you and say, hey, listen, God is saying to do this. God is saying to do that. God is saying to go and study your word. God is saying to go and fast, to go and pray. And then if you do not listen to the word of the prophet, you will still fail. So, the fivefold ministry was split in the church for us to be our spiritual guidance. Our fathers in the Lord, the one that is teaching us. The reason why I want to come I'm studying the whole Bible up and down, up and down, being in school, finish school, get all the certificate and everything, come to say, go and submit my life to the man of God for seven years. So, he said, this word is near you now. It's something you can do. I never noticed when we were young that we ask God, what do you want to be? Some of us said, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be this engineer. Everybody want to be great. But to fulfill what we desire, we find out because we did not pursue that desire. Once, probably sometimes, maybe because of laziness, or because of misdirection, or because of wrong, wrong crowd, or before, because of different, different things, finances, different, different things can happen. But you can be who you desire to be if you believe in God. <coughs> and today, I want to encourage you that the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle in life is received by this scripture that I'm talking today with you. The greatest miracle is the miracle to become a child of God. I don't care how many things you've won in life. I don't care if you have all the, your house is, 
it is built with gold and diamond, and you have your car that your car only drives in the moon. No matter what you have, if you have lost God, you are finished. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, He gave. He gave His last to save your soul. And they said, What will He profit you if you gain the whole world and then you lose your soul? I thank God that I have Jesus in my heart. All it takes is a free gift. To receive a free gift, Jesus Christ on that side. To ask him to come into your heart. When Jesus comes into your heart, he comes in the person of the Holy Spirit. And your body becomes a temple of God. And then the Holy Spirit through the world begins to show you the direction of life to make you to fulfill destiny. You are not running any race of destiny if you are not in God. If you are not in Christ. It's all in Christ. Your blessing is in Christ. And then when you give your life to Jesus, now Jesus says, now in order for you to fulfill the predestined plan of God for your life, you have to get into the world. And here Paul is saying, this world is near you now. You don't have to go once a year to Jerusalem to go and see the prophet or the priest to show you what the word of God is saying. He said, the word is near unto you, and this word is in your mouth and in your heart. He said, this is the word of faith that we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead, the Bible said, you shall be what? Saved. Listen, very, very simple. To believe the gospel, the good news that Jesus came. He came to pay the price. He came to die for sinners like us. He came, he was, he died, he was buried, and three days later raised from the dead and went to the Father in glory and sitting now at the right hand of the Father, praying and ministering on our behalf. His ministry now is sitting on the Father saying, I died for them. I shed my blood for them. I sacrificed for them. They are no more guilty. They are free. There is no more condemnation because they have in me. Now that God has given us that freedom, all we need is to take that gift and receive that gift. That is the greatest miracle. But I want to point to you, I want to give you a revelation that what this word is saying. I want you to catch this. If you receive the greatest miracle by this scripture, the greatest gift of becoming a child. Much more to be healed. If you want to get healing, if you want to be delivered from one thing or the other, whatsoever you are desiring from God, if you can receive this word, if you can apply this scripture here to become a child of God, that same way you will receive everything that you are believing God from. Now, let me show you. Let me do a little teaching. It says, God said, but what said it? The word is near you. All right. Even in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, Break it down. you shall be saved. Right. What he's saying is that if you can believe that Jesus came to die <coughs> and raise up from, from the dead for you, for your sin, and when you believe that in your heart first, and then because you believe that in your heart and you confess it out of your mouth, the Bible says that is how you become a child of God. That same principle, if you are sick, all you need, first of all, is to get the word concerning that area. If you are sick, you don't have no business looking for prosperity, for money. Right now, I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to be healed. Go and look at the word. The word, look at The word is near me, in your mouth. But before you can get that word in your mouth, you must have that word in your heart. See, the reason why people confess, Jesus said, not everybody that said, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. He said, if I'm 
their heart, with their mouth, they call me. But their heart is far from me. That means they are only confessing, but they do not have the word in their heart. See, when you do not believe anything in your heart, you can confess on a day, it's not going to become manifested. So what God is saying, the word is near you, you have the word. Anything in your life, the word will cover it. The word will transform and will change that area. So what you need to do, first of all, you got to be born again. You got to be in my kingdom. You got to be my child in order to enjoy the blessing of the kingdom of God. And the only way to do that, you must believe the word. Ah, I was in Muslim. But I heard that Jesus came to die for sinners like me. I heard that he shed his blood. I heard that he was sacrificed, nailed on the cross. That he paid the penalty for my sin. I heard that he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I held healed. I heard that in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 5, 21, that God made Jesus to be sin for me. That having become the righteousness of God. That means Jesus took my place and gave me his place. Jesus became sin for me, and because he became sin for me, he was on the cross suffering for me, he was sacrificing himself for me, Jesus had no sin of his own, so he was punished, he was getting what he did not deserve, he did not deserve to be punished, and I deserve to be punished, but now I'm getting what I do not deserve, I'm deserving grace, God is supplying my needs, God is giving my body, I do not deserve that because I deserve to go to hell because of my transgression, because of my sin. But because Jesus paid that price, because Jesus put that sin upon himself, he was punished, he was bruised, he was wounded, he died because of my sin. And he gave me his own righteousness. So righteousness is a gift. So, you say, so I'm righteous. I am righteous in Jesus. You know why? After you get righteous, because the same question I will ask you: How can Jesus be sinless? How is God doing all this in your life? It's part of all the wrong doing that you are doing. Then I will ask you: How is Jesus not getting all this punishment when he never did nothing wrong? Because there was a substitution. Of Sacrifice. Jesus became a sin and we become a righteous. He took our place and he gave us his place. And now when God looks at you, when he sees you, he sees the right, the blood of the light in your heart. He sees your righteousness. Because all righteousness has been punished upon his son. Jesus paid the price that we are supposed to pay. And because of that, because we believe in that good news, we receive it in our heart. We rejoice. And then God said, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I want everlasting life. Because I believe the gospel that He paid the price already, I'm free already. All I need now is just to receive it. So, what I believe, what Jesus has done for me, I will become a child of God. Very simple. It's a gift that God has given to us. Not by the work of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy. The Bible says, by grace you have been saved. Through faith. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, by grace you are saved through faith. Not of yourself. You can't save yourself. But it is the gift of God. Thank God for Jesus Christ. So, if God is setting us free through the world that we heard, the good news, as, like I said, I was a Muslim, but I had the good news that somebody paid the price for me, that I don't have to go to hell no more, that my sin, that my, all my sin that I've done in the past, in the present, and in the future, has been placed upon the Son of God, Jesus Christ. 
our high priest. And he nailed that sin for me on the cross. That I may be free. I received the gospel, the good news. And because I believe, I speak out of my mouth. The same way, when you want, you go to the hospital or anywhere, and the doctor say, this is so, 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 so. You have this, this, this. You said, that's what you said. But well, I have the final answer. The final answer is the word of the living God. The word of the living God said, Jesus Christ paid the penalty. He was wounded for my transgression. He said his word and he healed me. Healing is his children's bread. I am going to receive my healing. You have to believe that word. When you believe that word, instead of reading another scripture or signing some other area, the first thing follows in your life. If it is secret, if it is sin, if it is money, if it is finances, if it is business, if it is flesh of your flesh or both of your flow bone, if it is a job, you go to the world concerning that area. Begin to read, to meditate, begin to read until you receive the revelation in your heart. You cannot speak what you do not have in your heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Is a good man, out of the good treasure in his heart, speak for good things. He says, an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, speak for the evil thing. You want to know about somebody, I can tell you, I can be with somebody for 10 minutes, after talking for 10 minutes, I can know where he is. Because by the time you start using health, war, and all those things, and all that, you'll say, oh, I got to go, I, I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> because you know, he had a powerful tongue. Yes. The thing that is coming out of his heart is so polluted and, and, and dead that he can, you know, the Bible says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. If you believe something and you release that thing out of your mouth, your mouth is what you use to release what you believe in your heart. That is why we speak good things upon our children. So that they will grow up and become somebody. When somebody speaks evil of your children, they say, no, my, ch my child is a good child. is a blessed child. I don't care how many trouble that child is making. You say, he's going to become somebody. He's going to be he's blessed. And of course, he's above, not the man. And my God, my God will supply all this thing. And he's going somewhere. You speak life into your children, not death. So what the Bible is saying right here, that word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith that we preach. The word of faith that we preach is the word of faith. We must understand faith coming by hearing the word of God. According to the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says that for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that He is. And He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. You want something from God? You need to diligently seek Him. Somebody is looking for a job. You don't just stay at home and pop TV up and down. You get into the world. You say, God, you promise that you will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. You say you will open down. No man can shut. You will supply all my needs. Lord, you say, if I don't want, I will not eat it. And I want to want so I can eat it. Open down for me. Show me where I should go. And then you have to release faith upon the world. Because faith without corresponding action is a dead faith. You cannot pray like that and that's not in the world and believe the heart for a job and then you lay back on the bed. No, now you have to start, step out and start looking for jobs. So if you can step out and go for this, this, this last days where you can just go on your computer. Hallelujah. Oh, in our days I have to go from boss to boss. Go from different, different, different places. I start looking for job. And then favor will connect. And God will connect you to a place. Yeah, because you release your faith. You believe that. You study the word. You believe that God will supply your need. And you step out by faith. Looking. As you are looking, God will cause you to stumble onto your blessing. He will cause you to stumble to the destiny helper. Which is going to help you. And who is going to connect you? 
The same way. When you are believing for one thing or the other, it could be the flesh of your flesh or blood of your blood. When the Lord told me to leave, you leave. You know what? It was hard. Because I wanted to rationalize. Yeah? It's easy to be able to get a good woman in this big old crowd that will go to six members that they will have to be to pick up a female. But the moment I have obeyed God and I went and said, Lord, thank God, now I realized it was a distraction because my eyes was not on the pastor. Instead, I would just look at that sister that just is praying in front. Ah, this one is on fire. Let me see, maybe that one might be that one. Yeah. So, so it was a lot that had allowed me to go and sit where it was quiet. Nobody, I can't turn in and get in because they have their husband with them. So let me just face the pastor and listen to the word. So I received the word. And the word began to work. And do you know what? It wasn't even a week. God connected with my own wife at the restaurant. She was coming from her own church. I was coming from her. I just stumbled. It wasn't a blind thing. I just stumbled. We just stumbled and said, Little of the restaurant. I could have still be in that place, big church, still looking. And the one, do you know sometimes the one that you think is Holy Ghost uh, on fire, the one will be the devil in your life? Amen. Amen. <laughs> say that, Pastor. Yes. You say, ah, you have found it. Oh, you speak in tongues. I, I know you say, I do. You begin to see the lion came out. The lion coming out. Ah, you say, my God, what have I done? Ah, he has deceived me. All right. Say that. She asked, she spoke in tongues. Do this in prayer. And, uh, yeah. and now, we can't just, I say, I do. It was a, it, it, it's a different issue now. <laughs> I can't unchange I do no more because we have embarrassment. <laughs> I had a man. Oh, man. I had a man of God say something. He said, where do you find a spiritual man or woman of God? Some people say, ah, the one that pray, to pray, praise the tongue. Or the one that pray so hard. Ah, the one that jump up and shout and praise the Lord. Ah, he said, no. All of he said, in church, you have two faces. You can come to church with one face. And when you get to your house, you have another face. All right. He said, if you want to find a spiritual person, go and put a camera and hide it in their home. And see how Pastor is getting at his wife. Yes. Oh, huh, the right. world is going to kill me. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, this is the man that come and preach the world. Look at him. You will see a lot of things. You see, there was a time they went, they were going, that was Kenya. They were going to a certain place in Texas. And they said, let us stop, though. Let us stop and see the pastor, so, 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 and so. He said, as we have my wife, as we went in there, and knocked the door. It looked like it took almost one hour to open the door. They were arranging <laughs> things. They were, they were hyperhead. It was the first and everything. So they tried. It's, the moment we went inside, we knew something was not right. It was too harsh work that they spoke in the air. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of allowed me to open the fridge there because there's a hiding there and all that. And all this and this kind of talk. And he said, that is where you find a spiritual person. So, I'm saying this to let us know that it is the word of God that we give you direction. As we wait patiently and hear what God is saying, and let God direct and lead you to the one that he has called you to be with. The one that you will rest and enjoy and be peaceful. The one that will be a good leader, a godly man, men that will say, or women that will say, yes, we are for God for real. Now, it doesn't mean that we will be perfect. Because all of us will still face challenges and issues. It doesn't mean that you are over there. But we can say, thank God, I am not where I used to be. Even though I know what I'm supposed to be. That God is making things work in my life. I want you to understand this. It takes faith of God. 
The Bible says, with our faith, it is impossible to please him. That those who come to God must believe that he is and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We must diligently seek the Lord in his, in his word, in prayer, coming to church, coming our heart, our life, especially many of us have children. We must raise our children from in church. Because we don't want TV or any other thing in the world. If you don't train your children in the way they should go, the Bible says train your child in the way they should go so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. If you keep training them and you leave them and they go around, TV will train them. The world will train them. And then they get to the age of 18, 20, they will, you can't even handle them no more because you have not started the training by bringing them into the house of the Lord. When you start bringing them into the house of the Lord, when they grow up, I don't care how bad they could be, they can live. But you know what? One thing, God will draw them back because the seed has been sown in your heart when they were in church. So, God is believing for people that will please Him. But you cannot please God without faith. Faith coming by hearing. Romans 10 17. And hearing by the word of God. And faith is the substance of things that we offer in Hebrew 11, verse 1. It says, It is the substance. Faith brings substance to your hope. Hope does have no substance. Hope is what you are believing God for. Hope in the word of God. When you receive hope from human in the word of God, you release faith into it. So faith brings substance to your hope because hope will have no substance. But faith brings substance to your hope. Hope is your vision. Hope cannot be seen. But faith can become material, manifested. It will bring your hope that, is, that cannot be seen. It will bring it into the natural, to the manifestation. The Bible says, faith, love faith is the substance of things that we hope for. And it is the evidence of things that we have not seen. Though you do not see it, but the word of God has given you hope concerning what you do not see. And because the word of God has given you hope, you grab that hope and you release faith on it. And you believe that by Jesus Christ, I am healed. By Jesus Christ, my all my needs shall be made. By Jesus Christ, my children shall be a good kid. By Jesus ways and by the glory of God, I will get to the other side. Weeping may have dear for the night, but joy comes in the morning. No matter what in your life, trust to the word of the living God. The word of the living God will make a way for you. The word of the living God, sown into your heart, listening to your heart, is the God. Your heart is the ground. The word is the seed. If the seed is not sown in the heart, do not look for the harvest. If you are not planting seed of the word of God into your heart, it will be hard for you to receive the harvest. I am who I am today, not because of who I have, what I have done. I am who I am today because of the grace of God. But the grace of God will be multiplied in your life through the knowledge of God, according to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. He said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, if you are here this day, and you have believed this message, that your God is able to make a way for you. If you trust in God, the Bible says this word that we just preach is near you now. The word of faith that we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Now I'm using this message for salvation now. And you believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. Is anybody here today want to give his heart? I want to give his life to Jesus Christ. If anybody here today want to rededicate his life to God, God is able to make a way for you. Where there's a no need way. God wants to come into your heart. If you are here, you want to pray for you, you want to rededicate your life to God, and you want to give your praise to God. Will you lift up your hand with me? Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you please rise where you are? Please, men, some people that have raised up their hand. If you have raised up your hand, step forward towards me, please. Thank you, Sister Irene. Anybody want to rededicate? If you have raised up your hand, you want to be dedicated, and uh, you want to pray, we're going to pray for another, another thing. You guys, are you, are you guys coming out? I see you have raised up your hand. Come out. They give your heart to God when it's early. Amen. It's good to give your heart to God. If you want me to pray for you this time. You want to give your heart to Jesus. You want Jesus to do something. How many people want to go to heaven here? If you want to go to heaven, lift up your hand. Amen. I want to go to heaven too. So, if you know you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, you can't go to heaven. So, if you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, you have not rededicated your life, step forward. Before I pray for these people, God loves you just like you are. 